Hello, and welcome to Witchy Woman Podcast. I am your host, Danae Sweet, and this is episode 54. Today, we're going to be talking about Embolk. It is coming up quickly on the 1st, I believe that's Saturday. Um, So I thought it would be an appropriate time to go over this holiday. I totally missed it last year. I've kind of been like bouncing around as far as which um, sabbats that I talk about on the podcast because at some point I'm going to run out of topics (laughs) and I definitely wanted to spread the sabbats out just a little bit, but I do want to talk about in bulk. But first, I wanted to send a giant shout out to all my current uh, Patreon members, as well as the brand new ones. So for the month of January, we have uh, Amanda H., Selena K., um, uh, Michelle T., uh, Sydney, Aaron R., Alex J., Melanie H., Tara G., Nancy M. Thank you so much for joining the Patreon page and I look forward to sharing the coven with you. Um, If anybody else would like to check that out, you can go to uh, patreon.com slash witchy woman podcast and that is always in the notes um, when I do all the episodes or you can go to witchy woman podcast.com and click on um, the become a Patreon uh, link. Anyway, (laughs) so what you get with that is uh, access. Everybody gets access to the WW Coven. We are going to be doing a uh, ritual this weekend to celebrate in bulk together. Um, So you'll always be able to have some fun things like that happen uh, in the group. So I will quit yapping about that now. (laughs) So in my part of the world, it is cold. It is icy and it is pretty much miserable um the 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 weather is horrendous in western nebraska this time of year and february can honestly be the worst part of winter (laughs) so for us when we move into february we kind of hold our breath um but it does in bulk does mark the halfway point between uh winter and spring so we are half through all of this cold bullshit here (laughs) um it is when everything is signaling to awaken um the original word so i thought it was kind of neat the original word in bulk be, means in the belly so it means in the belly of the mother because that's where the seeds are be- beginning to stir as it is it's going to be spring so it's kind of like the beginning of of this awakening period it's a celebration of of all of that it's the awakening of the sun um coming back to bring life back into all of the vegetation and you're going to start to see like around here you're going to see all the cows have a little fuller bellies because they're going to get closer to to be having their calves um the Christian religion did adopt a couple of those um, of celebrations around here. February 1st became St. Bridget's Day. I'm going to talk about that later. And February 2nd became, became Candlemas Mass. Candlemas? Candlemas? I don't know. <laughs> and that's the day to make and bless candles for the entire year. The Feast of Purification of the Blessed Virgin Mary also is one of their um, celebrations. And that kind of embodies that maiden goddess theme, which is what we're celebrating if you do the triple moon, if you celebrate like the triple goddess type um, belief system. This is the maiden. She is full with child and has not given birth yet. The Imbolc predates Christianity and comes from the British Isles, and it actually is quite a bit older than Christianity. The earliest mentions of that celebration, and it was in Irish literature originating in the early 10th century. Um, Imbolc is actually the celebration of Celtic fire goddess Bridget in that area, and if you follow that um, particular path, she is the goddess of fire, of the sun, and of the hearth. Bridget is often used in fertility rites. She oversaw poetry, prophecy, and crafts. Bridget is considered one of the most powerful Celtic gods, and she is the daughter of Dagda, or Dagda, the oldest god in the Celtic pantheon. She brings fertility to the land and its people. So for for them, she brings spring she brings their livestock being fertile like they're they're with they're with child because of her they honor her because they believe that she brings the spring she brings that protective um 
energy over the the hearth she brings the warmth and the sunlight she's very closely associated with and connected to midwives um, and newborn babies, of course. And she is, for those of us who um, embody or try to embody, try to uh, celebrate and involve the triple goddess, she is the triple goddess. And uh, during Embolc, she is the maiden aspect. So you'll find throughout the year um, different goddesses will embody that particular um, phase of, of the goddess, the maiden mother and the crone. I really, really like um, the idea of Bridget. I think it's it's a really nice energy, especially after being stuck inside and being so cold. Even if it's snowing and shitty here uh, on February 1st, I still celebrate it and I still try to really embrace that turn of the wheel of the wheel in this sabbath because it means i don't have that much longer until i don't have to worry about snow and ice anymore which is awesome stories about bridget's origin say she was born in a flame or with a flame in her head and drank the milk of a mystical cow from the spirit world bridget is credited with being the very first Ke- with the very first keening. Now, I had no idea what keening was and I had to look it up. And it's traditional wailing for the dead practiced at funerals by Irish and Scottish women. I'm going to, I'll put some links in so you guys can hear what that sounds like. In pre Christian years, uh, Imbolc began the night before February 1st. So that, that night before, they prepared to. Um, Uh, welcome Bridget into their homes and they created a doll to represent the goddess from like oats and rushes and things that were in their field. It was placed uh, in a dress so it was definitely an effigy of sorts and they put that in a basket overnight and the day of Embolc was celebrated by burning lamps and lighting bonfires for her. And if you do any research about Bridget, you're going to see tons of represent references to bonfires and using fire as a representation for her. Because again, she represents the coming of the sun, um, the coming of spring and life. So that uh, she, I find it cool that she's a goddess and she represents the sun, which is a masculine element. So I really think she has a cool energy, a very unique, badass vibe to her. And I really, really like working with Bridget. So over the centuries, Bridget was kind of (laughs) brought into Christianity as Saint Bridget. Um, And the stories go that she is one of Ireland's three patron saints. And the Catholic Church claims that Saint Bridget was a historical person and that monks have written about her for uh, centuries. Uh, Bridget or Bridget, you're going to see Bridget like B-R-I-D-G-E-T, when um, talking about her sometimes in conjunction with the church. And then she's a patron, their patron saint, saint of Irish nuns, newborns, midwives, dairy maids, and cattle. And she's very much, go figure, like the goddess Bridget. Saint Bridget is associated with milk and fire. <laughs> no surprise there. And stories say she was born in Ireland around 453 AD. Uh, They say she was the daughter of a slave and a chieftain who was celebrated at an early age for all the knowledge she had about agriculture. So basically, she was an amazing farmer. She could grow amazing crops and assist with animal husbandry. But these stories are about as refutable as the stories of the pagan goddess she was adapted from. It's all... (laughs) It, I don't even want to go too far into that, but I'll, I'll start ranting. <laughs> she supposedly died in 524 AD, and the remains of her school, skull and hand are claimed to be in the possession of the churches of Portugal. I was doing a little research about her skull and hand that supposedly was in Portugal, and I found some cool stuff. So in 1283, somebody decided that they would like to plan a big dig. They were going to dig up St. Bridget, her bones in the cathedral in um, Armagh. I'm probably saying that wrong, but it's uh, in Ireland. And to send her skull somewhere safer. Some say the Holy Land, which they, some speculate that was Portugal. 
and their plan went pretty well until they sailed into the Lisbon Har Harbor to take a little bit of a break. And then they were killed in a field, I guess. So apparently they had um, this relic and it was discovered on one of their bodies like they were holding it or keeping it safe or something like that and they place it in the nearest parish church and they say that it lies there still today close to the tombs of the three knights so that's one story another story say that it was supposed to go to um i don't know what this means uh odivalis where king dents had built a church or a convent of irish nuns so basically it was supposed to go to this convent they, they found her bones and they were going to go to the convent with them but when they did that the knight suddenly died or were killed off by something um and that was taking taken as a sign that the relic was needed they needed to keep it there they weren't supposed to move these bones either way um it's definitely a interesting story so supposedly in 1920 Portugal sent back a fragment so say say it was they're saying it was in po Portugal and they sent back to Ireland um, a portion of her skull because basically um, the all, a lot of the heritage in Ireland because of the English destructive <laughs> takeovers, reformation, and all that happened in that um, country, they kind of lost a lot of their heritage. So Portugal sent that back, and it's supposedly in St. Bridget's Church in Kilister, Kil uh, Dublin, Ireland. And unfortunately, they did have some thefts there, um, and, but this, supposedly this, this was not lost. So, I don't know, you, you be the judge of it. There's a ton of things online about different stories about this. Um, I didn't find anything saying for sure whether it was St. Bridget's uh, bones or not. It's pretty much like everything when it comes to religion and the church. If they believe in it hard enough, then does it really matter if it's, if it's true or not? You know what I mean? So... Back to uh, witchcraft, paganism, and all that stuff. <laughs> so the celebration of St. Bridget's Day was actually uh, put in place by the church to replace Embolc. And on her feast day, in the, uh, in the churches and in areas where they still celebrate this, uh, there's going to be statues and figurines of St. Bridget of Kildare. And they are usually washed in the ocean and surrounded by candles to dry. Um, stalks of wheat are transformed into cross talismans known as Bridget's crosses. So basically they took another Christian or another pagan holiday and turned it Christian. Um, I'm sure you're tired of me ranting about that. So I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> um, so how can modern witches today celebrate this holiday? So for secular witches out there, you can celebrate the seasons, the earth and the turning of the wheel. Um, and what and what that means is if you're secular, you don't involve deity. You're just doing, um, you're just, how do I explain? explain it because it's not something I do but there's plenty of secular witches out there that just do witchcraft um and do not involve any kind of uh deity or divine anything um it's just working with natural energies of of the earth and honestly when I do some spells and stuff I really don't need I don't involve a, a deity in them I'm just doing the spells and working with the earth's ele uh, energy or the elements so I think I kind of mix and match <laughs> but I definitely am pagan and involve deity in my overall practice so for those of us who do involve deities then this is the day to celebrate Bridget or whichever deity that you associate with this time of the year maybe you just um you don't have a specific deity but you involve the triple moon goddess or the triple goddess and you celebrate that maiden form on that day Anyway, you you celebrate it is fine. If you don't celebrate it, it's really not. I mean, people are gonna get mad at me for this probably, but it's really not a big deal. It's you do you. If this isn't a holiday that super that resonates with you deeply, um, if you're too busy, if you got shit going on, um, it's okay. I know a lot of us. Um, I know I do. I know I feel pressured to celebrate each and every um, esbot and sabbat that there is, and 
honestly, we have busy lives and it's not always possible for me to get out to my altar and really um, properly, if there is a proper way, (laughs) to celebrate each Sabbath. Sometimes, to be honest, it's after I cook, you know, my supper for for the family. It's literally just a moment staring at my food and thanking the universe or whatever deity is involved with that particular Sabbath, maybe lighting a candle before I go to bed and sleeping. (laughs) So um, I'm all over the place with my practice. Sometimes I'm totally, you know, go huge and there's a gazillion candles lit and I'm feeling super powerful and it's, you know, very energetic and I love it. And then other Sabbaths, I'm so damn tired that I just make a mental note, yay, Sabbath, and go to bed. So however, however you or wherever you fit into all that, it is okay. There's no perfect person. We are humans in, in, it's okay to be not as good or as perfect or whatever as you think that you have to be. Um, Give yourself some slack, okay? (laughs) So let's talk about symbolism and the correspondences with this particular holiday. So symbol symbolism of imbolc we kind of talked about it before it's um the the maiden form of the goddess it's spring is coming new life new growth the coming of the sun it's a lot of renewal type things so if you have any spells that you would like to do that involve growth and renewal that would be the day to do it um and it's also if you follow the the um belief system of the wheel of the year and the god and the goddess and when they get together and make babies and die and all that it's the reunion of the goddess and the god um and definitely involves fertility on the day on this day so that would be the symbolism of in bulk. Some symbols are uh, white flowers, candle wheels, Bridget's crosses, um, let's see, oh, acorn tipped wands, uh, plows. Okay, so I've heard this pronounced two, two ways, besoms or besoms, just big brooms. <laughs> so those are some of the things that you can use to um, symbolize her. I may try to make one of those crosses out of some, some straw and stuff that I find. I'm, I don't know. I, I say I really want to do it, but I probably end up will not doing it. But if I do, I will definitely post some pictures. Some of the herbs for this holiday include angelica, bay laurel, blackberry, uh, heather, iris, myrrh, tansy, violets, and basically all the white and yellow flowers. You're going to see a lot of white and yellow flowers start popping up, especially those, uh, the ones that are bulbs. You know, they'll, you'll start seeing the little uh, tips of, of their leaves. For us here in Nebraska, maybe not quite yet, but it's getting close, so we're going to start seeing those pop up. The train is especially loud today. I don't know if you can hear that, but holy hell. Hell. Foods uh, of this season, all things seeds. So pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, all kinds of seeds. So if you can involve some kind of seeds into your into your breads or sprinkle it on top of some granola, some poppy seed cakes, muffins, scones, bread, anything dairy, <laughs> um, onions. It's one of the first vegetables that are going to come up. Uh, garlic, raisins, and herbal teas. Spiced wines, of course. I think every p- pagan holiday lists spiced wine or mead as something that is a uh, is representative of that Sabbath. Incenses are wisteria, cinnamon, violet, vanilla, myrrh, um, and basil and bay. Colors are white, pink, red, yellow, um, brown, and like a really light green. I think it's light green because it's like that beginning. You see everything like all the leaves are kind of light yet because they haven't like fully developed yet in some of the areas. Here, everything's freaking ugly brown still because let me, let me look. Hang on. Yeah, right now I've probably got, I'm looking out my north window and in my yard, I've probably got eight inches of snow still on part of my yard that doesn't get very much sun. So, it's still cold as shit and miserable here. <laughs> so, ugh. Um, some crystals that you can put on your altar to represent um, in bulk. Um, amethyst, bloodstone, garnet, ruby, um, turquoise, 
anything yellow. So we're talking, um, let's see, citrine, yellow sapphires, anything yellow and anything red for sure. Um, we're, when, when you think of chakras during this season, think root and sacral chakra. So this is heavily, um, at the bottom of our chakra system because it's awakening. Um, we've got that sacral stuff going on. That's where all of our reproductive organs are. And this is a fertility or the beginning of the f fertility sabbat. So it's definitely in line with that. And some of the things that you can do. So there's so many activities and I will make sure that I post some links to some sites that have some really cool activities that you can do but anything with candles because she is a fire goddess a sun goddess anything with with candles so light a bunch of candles and even if that's just lighting a couple candles a few minutes before like sunset go that's probably more online what I will do you can go outside go hiking search for signs of spring with your family so if you have a favorite hiking trail kind of you can you can go and have your kids start pointing out signs of spring um, making of those crosses are something that you can do together feasting of course it's a pagan thing you gotta feast and drink ale right <laughs> and bonfires are a huge thing so basically get outside if you can if you can't get outside which I don't know depends on what the weather's like on Saturday but um if you can't get outside then just connect with the energy so I have some yellow red uh can and red candles that I'll probably light and try to really just connect with the earth and recognize within my own self that it is awakening and the wheel is turning. It kind of gives me hope to sit down and make myself go, okay, made it through half of the winter, got half of it less left. I can totally do this. Oh, I totally forgot to mention animals associated. So um, the two obvious ones are cattle and sheep. Are, are a part of this because that's what they're getting close to having their babies around this time um, and she herself was closely associated with those animals and I wanted to share something that I did last year for in bulk it wasn't anything huge because I really didn't have time um, but it, it was when I still had the shop and I had a an altar there at the shop that I had decorated and everything and I had because I burn shit all the time <laughs> I had written down some things that I wanted to to come into fruition. I had some goals and had some things and it was a perfect day because uh, it's renewal and starting and, and beginnings. So I wrote a couple of things down that I really, really wanted to manifest in the next like season, next quarter. So I wrote those down, meditated on them, and I popped them in my cauldron, which is just a fire safe um, uh, incense burner that I have. And I lit it on fire and just watched it burn. It sounds super simple, but it was really nice. Like to me, it was going, okay, the, I'm going to harness the energy that is the day and try to make it something personal to, for, for me. And, and of course, I had like a yellow and my, I had a yellow and a red candle for her. But mostly I was just trying to embrace the season, embrace that turning, that forward momentum. Um, so it might be something that resonates with you, it might not, but I thought I'd give you the idea more often than not for a sabbat I will burn something because it's easy and I'm a lazy witch let's just be honest I'm busy and I'm lazy so um burn stuff so that's all I have on in bulk it's not one that I usually take big efforts to celebrate but um it is an important uh milestone during the year and I really wanted to get that information out because I've been having so many messages about celebrating the Sabbaths um I wanted to do some book recommendations I do know that um Llewellyn the publishing uh group they put out a uh, Sabbath book, one book per Sabbath, and I have yet to get those, but I've had a lot of people um, refer me to those saying they're amazing. You can also get the uh, 2020 uh, Sabbath almanac that they put out, and those are fabulous. It goes through each um, Sabbath, gives you kind of a little rundown of what it is, and then some activities that you can do with um, uh, with your family or with, or by yourself. So I do highly recommend those. I will put 
the links for those in the show notes too so that if you want to check those books out you sure can Ooh, I wanted to share with you guys what I have decided I'm going to do my workshop on uh, during Untamed Fest. So I decided to do it. I have a workshop that I've been doing on empaths and how to manage that gift. And it usually goes over really well. And I think it's something that people need to learn, especially if you're an empath or even just highly sensitive. Um, All the tools that I talk about are things that you can put into practice and improve your life. So I will be doing about a 40 minute presentation or workshop um, on empath management at Untamed Fest. And that would be on Saturday. I believe my time slot's like 11.30 to 12.30, I think. But anyway, if you guys want to check out Untamed Fest, uh, go to Uh, untamedfest.com. No, I am not being sponsored by them. I'm just going to, I plan on going anyway um, because I wanted to do something cool and pagany and meet new people. And I saw that they were looking for workshop people and and talked to them a little bit about a booth. So anyway, I will be there with a booth for Witchy Woman Podcast. So if anybody is in the Fort Collins area that wants to come hang out with us, grab your tickets. I'll be there the entire weekend. I think it'd be really freaking badass if a bunch of us could meet and hang out all weekend. I think, I just think that would be awesome. So anyway, I'm always down for new witchy pagan friends. <laughs> anyway, that's, that's something I'm so, I'm. I can't believe how excited I am to go. It's camping. So it's primitive. So if you are a glamper, I don't know. There's hotels not too far away, but we will be camping. Um, My hubby is coming. I doubt Maddie comes, but maybe I can drag her. I don't know. I think she's planning on like, she has this, uh, she graduates early in May. And I think she has this idea that the summer is going to be one giant party before she has to become an adult. So I don't know. We'll see. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I think life is about to um, get pretty real for her. So I'm going to let her play as much as she can before before she has to go off and be an adult. And I'm still working on the YouTube videos that I'm putting out. I went and recorded and then this giant uh, tractor thing was like scraping the ice from the streets the entire time I was trying to record this weekend so I called it quits and I will start over this week (laughs) so I plan on having some um public videos that are like witchy 101 stuff um things that you can can learn the basics off of and then for the ww coven group I have some full spell um presentations basically how to and I will walk through a bunch of spells I've also got some meditations that are specific for that group that I'll be posting on there so I will have public stuff and I'll have the private stuff for the WW Coven group as well and I am working on that I was gonna try to film some today and I got like four hours of sleep last night and I look like a puffer fish so nobody wants to see this face right now (laughs) so um I'm gonna wait uh until I have a quieter day because today has also been crazy busy for some reason and maybe I'll get some more sleep and I cannot look quite so scary Anyway, I hope that you guys have enjoyed this episode and you can learn something from it. If you would like to share, please share what you do on this holiday. I I love to hear what other people do because I'm all about learning from each other. And if something that you guys do resonates with me, I'm totally stealing it. <laughs> so, so please share. I'll make sure that I put a post in the Witchy Woman Friends group so that you guys can share with us. Um, if you haven't liked our Facebook page, please do. Um, you can get me on Instagram at Witchy Woman Podcast, and I'm on Twitter, Danae underscore sweet underscore. And check the website out. It's www.witchywomanpodcast.com. And right there, you can listen to all the episodes. You can read my blogs. You can read a little bit about me, what I do. And also, if you click on the sponsors page, you can read about each one of our sponsors. They are amazing. We have got, uh, Crystal of Earth Mama Creations, Shelly of Lavender Potions, and we have Rena of Holistic Healing Therapeutics. Please check them out. I love those ladies. All right. So I guess that's all I've got, you guys. So I guess until next week, as always, stay witchy. Bye-bye.